you are welcome to my channel today is going to be about atropine are you familiar with that no problem let's go atropine could appear under different trade names but the commonest one is atropine another one is daturine and there's atropine of timing drops so of timing atropine is available we will go into that later on it belongs to the class of medications known as anticholinergic agent it is an antidote and also it is an antispasmodic agent uses mostly in bradycardia and also in prevention or inhibition or salivation in anyone with excessive secretions atropine could help inhibition of secretions now in emergency medicine atropine is very very helpful when it comes to poisoning Poisoning with mushroom containing muscarine. Poisoning with nerve agent. That's a particular case that is on the news right now. Poisoning with organophosphate insecticide. Poisoning with carbamate insecticides. Atropine will help in all these cases. As a chronotropic agent that could affect the heart rate, Atropine is very useful for stress echocardiography in intubation, that is endotracheal intubation, we can make use of atropine. And of course, for ophthalmic uses, atropine is very helpful for dilatation for examination. Now, the question surrounding the use of atropine and asthma should not become controversial. With that, we'll just go through the facts about atropine and asthma on the next slide. But as for me, I have never used atropine to treat asthma, and I'm not yet convinced that I should do that. So, atropine. Is it useful in treating asthma? Let's get to the next slide. Now, let's go through some facts when it comes to the use of atropine in asthmatic attacks. Though atropine is a good bronchodilator, but that will happen at large airways only. It's not a good bronchodilator at smaller Airways. Then, non paora atropine is contraindicated in asthmatic attack or asthmatic patient. Why that? It can lead to excessive dryness of the airway. Systemic form can cause mucus thickening and airway dryness. Some use it. No, in the inhaled form or given intramuscularly for exercise induced bronchoconstriction. The power of atropine is believed to be readily absorbable, so it's not the best choice. However, if you are confused or you want more clarity, you can contact your pharmacist or your clinical pharmacologist. Let me repeat. I have not used atropine to treat asthma, and I will not, because there are other related medications like ipatropium that could be used instead of atropine. Atropine has been dropped from list of the medications useful for advanced cardiac life support. This happened in the year 2010. Atropine was removed from the list. 
And why that? The expert felt that it was no longer useful and therefore it would no longer be recommended to treat asystole and pulseless electrical activity. And the reason behind that is that they felt that there's a weak evidence to support its use here. Also, we were made to know that bradycardia would not be corrected if it is associated with second or third degree heart block. And if bradycardia is also in the phase of myocardial infarction, the report we got is that it may actually lead to more ischemia in them. Because of all these reasons, atropine has been taken off from the list of medications for advanced cardiac life support in the year 2010. Atropine could appear in form or solution for ingestion as sulfate. And we may be able to find out other the generic one at 1 mg per ml or 8 mg per 20 ml or 0.6 mg per ml or 0.4 mg per ml. It could come with preservative free type as generic 0.4 mg per 0.5 ml or 1 mg per ml. It could also be in form of solution as auto injector that could be given trimuscularly as sulfate. And that could be under atropine, 0.5 mg per 0.7 ml or 1 mg per 0.7 ml or 2 mg per 0.7 ml. It could also be in form of solution with preservative free atropine as 0.25 mg per 0.3 ml. It might be a form of solution prefilled syringe injection as sulfate under the generic name as 1 mg per 10 ml or 1 mg per 5 ml. It could be without any preservative, that is preservative free generic as 0.25 mg per 5 ml or 0.5 mg per 5 ml, or 1 mg per 10 ml. Administration. You can give atropin intramuscularly to the outer tire. To those who are used to EpiPen, this is just the same way. Can be administered through clothing, you can massage the injection site after, but please let the auto injector remain in place for about 10 to 20 seconds. Why that? Just to be sure that the medication had already gone in before you remove and you start massage. Intravenous route should be given very fastly if you have chosen the IV route. Now, this is an irony, right? If you have gone through most of the medications that I've published, I would have stated there that start slowly, go slowly, or spend so, so many, you know, even one hour, administer very slowly. In this case, just like adenosine, you give very fast. Slow intravenous administration could lead to paradoxical bradycardia. But Giving atropine will not prevent you from using external pacing. That is, if you are dealing with bradycardia and you have given your atropine, please, that is just for immediate rescue, proceed with you know, all other interventions. Intraoceous route is possible. And the tracker route will include diluting the medication in less than 10 ml of sterile water or normal saline. You can also give it subcutaneously if needed. You see that we are pretty lucky. We can give it refrain through so many routes.
adverse reactions. The adverse reactions that I'll be going through are those related or the frequency of the times we give it and of course its severity. So we might be dealing with chest pain by Germany, transient AV dissociation, atrial fibrillation, atrial arrhythmia, acesole, decreased blood pressure, EKG changes with prolonged QT. Here, let me do more on prolonged QT. When we have prolonged QT, if it is not corrected, that would degenerate to tozer the point. So that the point would have immediate intervention, will proceed to ventricular tachycardia. From monomorphic ventricular tachycardia to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. If there is no correction on time, the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia will degenerate to ventricular fibrillation. If there's no defibrillation, the ventricular fibrillation then will go down to asystole. Without instituting advanced cardiac life support program calling code blue, everybody running around to help, asystole would then you know, end up having the patient in the mortuary, that is, death. We could also have widening KRS, flattening T, and shortening PR interval. We might be faced with ectopic beats, flushing, increased blood pressure, left ventricular failure, myocardial infarction, palpitations, sinus tachycardia or supraventricular tachycardia. In a nutshell, we'll be battling with arrhythmias of all sorts. We can be faced with drowsiness, abnormal EEG, I meant EEG, electroencephalogram, not EKG. Here we're dealing with the brain. Agitation, amnesia, anxiety, ataxia, confusion, delirium, decreased tendon reflexes, dry eye syndrome, and increased level of blood urea nitrogen. We could be faced with dysmetria, emotional disturbance, feeling hot, hallucination, decreased level of consciousness, hyperparesia, mania, respiratory failure, and failure to thrive. Now, the common presentations of anticholinergic agents are constipation, urinary retention, pupillary dilatation, dry mouth, anhydrosis, dehydration, decreased level of libido, decreased bowel sounds, laryngospasm, and angle closure glaucoma. When it comes to contraindications, we have less to talk about. And why that? Contraindications to atropine, they are not just so pronounced. But there's what is known in medicine as idiosyncrasy, which means an individual may react, may even develop anaphylaxis to atropine, which might be uncommon. But then, he or she has developed it. If that is part of the history here, we keep it off the table. One, for the sake of safety, we need to take certain precautions. And we'll have the following at the back of our mind while trying to use atropine. There's likelihood of anaphylaxis, like I've just said. Hypertamia, part of the problems with anticholinic agent, right? Psychosis. Arrhythmia, we've gone through a list you know, just a while ago. 
autonomic neuropathy. And we have to be cautious in cardiac diseases like myocardial infarction or myocardial ischemia. And why that? If you are dealing with bradycardia involving myocardial infarction, it can actually worsen the situation because on its own can give myocardial ischemia. Let us uh, note this. If we are dealing with pediatric age group with partial pyloric stenosis, and we administer our atropine, we can tilt partial pyloric stenosis into a complete obstruction. We should avoid atropine in ulcerative colitis, toxic megacolon, and paralytic ilus. Remember, I've just mentioned constipation as part of the side effects of atropine. Now somebody is having paralytic ilus with peristasis that is not you know, progressing, that is not moving. What is happening? Double barrier, right? It can precipitate glaucoma. In hepatic impairment, the effect of atropine will be prolonged. Then we have to be careful with the dosage. Before we know it, we can be double dosing, you know, the level of atropine. Be careful in hypothyroidism and myasthenia gravis. In prostatic hypertrophy, we will not use atropine. Why that? Prostatic hypertrophy on its own will lead to urinary retention and UTI. Now, atropine, a known anticholinergic agent, is added on top of that. What's happening? Double barrier, right? We have to take a special note of the following. Let's assume that someone has cardiomyopathy and he or she has been placed on the list of people that will need heart transplant. Unfortunately enough, he or she gets a heart transplanted. And one day there is a bradycardia somewhere and you felt like, okay, let me give it a pain. The atropine would not be useful here. And why that? There will be lack of vigor innovation. Children are more sensitive to anticholinergic effects of atropine. So please, since pediatricians will not keep atropine as part of the you no know, common medications you know, that they will be using, then the rest of us should follow their you know, line of thought. So, when we're dealing with kids, atropine should be kept away. There's likelihood of paradoxical bradycardia in children. Drug-drug interaction. I will not be able to go through the entire list of possible drugs that atropine may interact with. So, I will leave that discretion you know, to you and your pharmacist. And of course, you can make use of your clinical pharmacologist if one is available in your place, keep, you know, clinic, hospital, or jurisdiction. Magnesium of action. Atropine is a competitive antagonist of acetylcholine at muscarinic receptors. Maybe that's why we can make use of it effectively in mushroom poisoning with muscarine. So, the competitive antagonism will help in reversing bocoria and bronchoconstriction, meaning excessive secretion by the lungs will decrease, and bronchoconstriction will stop and will have bronchodilation. It has no effect on nicotinic receptors. Oh, that's not the good news. Why not? Muscle weakness, fasciculations, and paralysis will remain. It can increase cardiac outputs. That'd be an advantage, right? And it will dry up secretions. That is the reason why many people prescribing it will even prescribe it in the first place. 
you know, excessive salivation, vomiting, you know, and they want to stop that and they jab the patient with atropine. Now, examples of situations where we can make use of atropine are the following. Number one, bradycardia. In symptomatic bradycardia, we can give atropine intravenously or intramuscularly at a dose of 0 0.5 to 1 milligram every 3 to 5 minutes with maximum as 3 milligram. And to check out 1 to 2 milligram every 3 to 5 minutes. During neuromuscular blockage reversal, we can give atropine intravenously at 5 to 7 microgram per kilogram if we are administering the atropine with hydrophonia. But if we are not administering it with hydrophonium and we are reversing neuromuscular blockage, if we have chosen neostigmine, then we will go for higher dosage of between 15 to 20 microgram per kilogram. Number two, poisoning with mushroom containing muscarine. If that is the diagnosis, then solution is right here. Intravenously, we can give atropine at one to two milligram, and we can repeat as may be required to reverse the following effects. Vomiting, bradycardia, salivation, diarrhea, bronchorean and bronchospasm. I've gone through all these you know, on, on previous slides. So I don't need to waste your time going over all of them again. Number three, in organophosphate poisoning, Severity of the poisoning will determine the dose and how frequently we are going to administer it. But we can make use of the intravenous or intramuscular route or may decide to give it by infusion at the rate of 1 to 5 milligram and we may repeat every 3 to 5 minutes. That is inorganophosphate poisoning. Number four, as a chronotropic agent for stress echocardiography, we can make use of intravenous route at a dose of 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 milligram up to 2 milligram. We are not going to be giving these indefinitely. We'll reach a point and we'll stop. And ask me what, what level, what point? When we reach 85% of the target heart rate, we'll stop using the atropine here. And I've given an hypothetical case yet for us to get this rightly. If the target heart rate is 100 beats per minute, the 85% of that target will be 85 beats per minute. I chose a very simple one for myself, right? Mm -hmm. What will you do if you're the one? Okay, so once 85 beats per minute, as we reach after the heart rate, when the target is 100 beat per minute, we stop using atropine. Okay, with this, I come to the end of the presentation on atropine. It's a pretty good drug, but we need to remember the side effects, anticholinergic side effects that will fall. It's a rescue agent, suspended. Many people are still using it. Make your choice. Thanks for listening. Remember to give thumbs up, remember to share, remember to leave comment, and remember to subscribe to my channel so that you can get all my presentations immediately they are published. I appreciate it.